Tonight, VAT rate increases from 12.5% to 15%, excluding NHIL levy with immediate effect. Now, if you want to introduce such a thing, you should indicate to us the policy underpinning what you want to do. The principle, what it is that the current regime is not doing what, what we want to achieve. If there are any defects, let's know. Unfortunately, somebody just gets up to indicate to us that the threshold should go up by 2.5%. And it seems to me and to the minority that this indeed is a day of shame. My name is Stephen Anti, and this is today's big story. Parliament passed the value added tax amendment bill increasing the VAT rate from 12.5% to 15%. Now, when you add NHIL to it, that works up to about 17%. Uh, this was passed Friday afternoon, and not even the boycott of the minority part will deter them. Now, the issues that are making the headline, the minority in Parliament walked out of Parliament accusing the government of smuggling in the 2.5% increase in the VAT uh, rate into a legislation under consideration by the House. Let's now uh, take a look at that walkout. Subtitiously, you do this. You spring a surprise on the people of Ghana. This figure, honorable, this is most, most honorable, disingenuous. Honorable member, I this think, most, most I think your words are too and strong. And I would not honorable want to member, be part of this. Honorable argument. member, I think your words are too strong. We, the we words surreptitiously. Yes. The use of the words surreptitiously, I insist, I think, I insist is unparliamentary. The, par the parliament of this country. The use, the parliament of, this country the the use of the words surreptitiously. Mr. Speaker, I the parliament of Ghana is not a parliament for the NDC. The parliament of Ghana is not a parliament for the NDC. And we need to build consensus. We need to build consensus on such matters. We can allow this. We can allow this. Honorable members, let's make some progress. Let's make some progress. Yes, honorable chairman of the committee. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I wish to move. I wish to propose an amendment that plus 10 sub plus 18 of the bill. After paragraph C, I made reference to the votes and proceedings. November 2013. Well, the minority members say the government is using the majority in the House to push through the increase without debate and uh, due process. Uh, we have a reaction from the minority leader, Seche Mensabonso. Uh, because we had amended the earlier one, so it should not read C, it should be B. So the B I said earlier one is correct. That to what has just transpired in Ghana's parliament. And it seems to me and to the minority that this indeed is a day of shame for Ghana. You witness that over these past few weeks, government has introduced a bill in this house, the Value Added Tax Bill 2013, which was introduced in this house in July 2013. 
Now, the bill does not talk about increasing the threshold of the VAT in any way. And for that reason, it's not captured in the memorandum, which states the policy and principles of government's position in respect of any bill. Now, it's been in the grapevine that the NDC wanted to use this to introduce um, an enhancement of the VAT threshold. I, as I said on the floor of the House, when I heard, I engaged the Minister of Finance, and he said to me that there's no such thing at all. I engaged the majority leader who said to me that it's not been on the cards. Indeed, the finance minister told me that yes, he's heard that the managers of the National Health Insurance Scheme are pushing for an upward adjustment of the VAT threshold. But he is not buying into that. So it's not going to happen. We're supposed to conclude the consideration stage today and they come with this nocturnal conspiracy to up the threshold of the VAT. Well, Member of Parliament for Sekendi, Papa Usuankuba, has described the action by government as a disgrace. He told Joe News Parliament uh, procedures have been sidelined in a desperate bid to have the bill passed into law. He explained that for a new tax to be imposed, which uh, the minority has well, which government has done, a specific legislation ought to have been brought before the House, deferred to a committee uh, for a thorough discussion after which the bill will be debated on the floor of Parliament. Papa Usanko must suspect that none of this has been, none of these have been done, and yet the House went on to pass the bill. The minority, uh, as you already know, subsequently staged a walkout and chose to organize a press conference. The Constitution provides in Article 106.2, that no bill other than such a bill shall be introduced in Parliament unless it is accompanied by an explanatory memorandum setting out in detail the policy and principles of the bill. The defects of the existing law, the remedies proposed to deal with those defects and the necessity for its introduction. If you look at the bill, the principle, the policy drive, have been established the consolidation of value added tax laws. So, where from this? Now, if you want to introduce such a thing, you should indicate to us the policy underpinning what you want to do, the principle, what it is that the current regime is not doing what which we want to achieve. If there are any defects, let's know. Unfortunately, somebody just gets up to indicate to us that the threshold should go up by 2.5%. So now it goes up to um, 15% from the 12.5%. This, this, this is dangerous for us as a country. Already, so you know, the VAT now is going to go to 17.5%. Now, you know, the the Minister for Finance, who was sitting right there, has not told us what are the anticipations, how much they intend to rake in, what is the level now, and what is intended to be raked in. And I believe that if you want to do this, if you want to do this, Perhaps you should tell us the problems that you have been having all this while. He didn't tell us any such thing. All he did was to spring this on us as a surprise. Well, the chairman Sabonso went on to say the president and his team should be tackling corruption rather than increasing the VAT rate. The health insurance, when they were talking about upping the levels, we're saying that there should be some components that should be reserved for them. It should be earmarked for them. Is it going to be what is going to be? 
Is that going to be the program of government? Nobody tells anybody anything. In any event, we all know that there are massive leakages and corruption in the system. Those are the issues that are current. If government wants to come to increase the VAT threshold, they should at the same time tell us what measures they are taking to plug the loopholes in the system. Otherwise, if you increase it to 30%, you yoke the people of this country with a heavy burden, and yet whatever increases that you manage to have would not be put to good use because they will end up lining people's pockets. That is our concern. That is our concern. And so that explains why we felt that it's important to wash our hands of it and tell the good people of this country that their monies are going to go into government kitty. Government is not accountable to whatever they've had already and is going to end up lining the private pockets of individuals. And they would not want to be part of it, which explains why, like Pontius Pilate, we washed our hands of it and left the chamber. Well, the 15%, like I said, will be exclusive of the National Health Insurance Levy, which is 2.5%, making up a total VAT NHIL of 17%. Let's now get a reaction from the majority. Dr. Benjamin Kumbo is majority leader. To see in that budget that the indication was already given that you have to continue to increase your tax thresholds, you have to increase your tax revenue, and you have to consider adjusting that. Unfortunately, there have never, never been the political will because of the political timing to adjust that. It has become quite clear that all the deficits and cash flow problems that you are having is one that is emanating from the gap in adjusting the VAT rate. And if constitutionally we are enjoined to manage the economy in a prudent way, and the prudent management of the economy require that you adjust VAT, you would have to buy that bullet at one point or the time. Otherwise, the distortions of the economy would continue. That is the first consideration. The second one is that when you have a VAT bill, you would know that a tax administration bill was first brought to this house. The real reason why that tax administration bill is held in abeyance was in anticipation of this VAT. And if you do not get all your tax regimes put in place, you just come with the tax administration to deal with all your taxes, only for you to bring this VAT, and it will require a different tax administration approach that is in conflict, and you have to go back and amend your tax administration yeah. So we believe that before the budget comes in and a clear revenue policy is established, clear all the consequential tax legislation that are in the offering, and this VAT is one of them. In doing that, you cannot just amend a VAT or uh, uh, come out with a VAT bill when you are preparing the budget, and two days after you've presented the budget, you come out with an adjustment of a 2.5 of VAT in the budget, which will require you bringing back the VAT that you would have passed back for an amendment to implement what has been put in the budget. So we found out that the best way was to use the current VAT Act and be a bill as it were and then adjust the VAT and let it be reflected in the budget as part of the revenue framework. And it will be in well, this is today's big story. My name is Stephen Enti, and we're joined on the line now by the Deputy Finance Minister, Atu Forsing. Uh, good evening, sir, and welcome to today's big story. Good evening. Now, the minority in Parliament are saying that government did not give sufficient reasons for increasing the VAT rate from 12% to 15%. Is that the case? It cannot be the case, and I'm surprised they are saying that. In fact, the only reason why they are saying this is that they were not listening when I moved for an amendment. And I said clearly, and of which, of course, I'm going to repeat what I said, but it's important that we correct that impression that they are selling, that we did not provide reasons why we are going to increase the VAT. I did say that on the floor, but because they were making a lot of noise at the background and some of them hitting their decks, so they did not concentrate on what I was saying. So I did, I did provide 
answers and questions, reasons why government is going ahead to increase VAT by 25 Right. So would you be kind enough to run us through uh, a summary of the specific reasons for increasing the VAT rate? You see, what I said was that it's important for us to come to a realization that Ghana is not a better income country. And therefore, the availability of concessional loans, aids and grants are considerably reduced. The cost of borrowing is higher in the world market, and we must strike a balance between external borrowing and internal resource mobilization. It is therefore the period for us to rely on resource mobilization, in fact, internal resource mobilization, and VAT is a mechanism that will enable us to raise some of these resources. I also emphasize that this bill in itself exempts basic foods, aquatic products, animals, health care, and education materials. I went further by telling them that, indeed, this is going to rake in a total revenue of $745 million. We went further by telling them that Ghana, um, the government is not going to devote this into consumption. We intend to use this to support the capital expenditure aspect of the budget. And going into 2015, government is going to establish a Ghana Infrastructure Fund. And this, what we are going to get from this, we are going to use it to support the Ghana Infrastructure Fund for the purposes of financing infrastructure. And this is exactly what we said to them. And unfortunately, maybe they were not paying attention, so they did not listen to us. Right. Um, Mr. Fawcett, I'll have you hold there. I'm also joined on the line by Dr. Anthony Akotose, a ranking member of finance uh, of the Finance Committee. Uh, good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us here on today's Big Story. Thank you. You heard the Deputy Finance Minister saying uh, government gave sufficient reasons for increasing the VAT rate by 2.5%. Uh, specifically, $750 million will be raised and targeted to infrastructural development. Your comments on this, sir? Uh, I, I, I had only a, a, a little bit of this conversation when you called me. Uh, so uh, it is not true that I had all of what you were saying. You, right. You, you often just called me. Right. So see, let's... There, are, there are a couple of issues. I mean, in, in this nation, uh, such a bigger tax uh, uh, policy uh, initiative, it is not on Friday when most MPs are going to Parliament that you bring this. The minister is coming to Parliament on Tuesday to present the budget. If it's a major policy initiative, as they always do, and they recommend a large increase. He brings it on Tuesday, then we debate it. But what happened today is not the best for uh, good governance in Ghana. Right. So, 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 Doc, let's get it clear. Is it that you are opposed to the rate increase of 2.5 percent, or no, you are I, opposed I, to the procedure we, that we, was we followed not, in placing it before Parliament? Had, uh, we have not even been given an opportunity to, be, to debate. The, 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 that uh, policy. What happened today precludes anybody from seriously debating it. And I'm saying it is not best for Ghana. The issue is not the merits of the merits. Let us have a chance to debate properly because we are the people's representatives. So, if, so, seriously, Doc, I'm concerned that if you, you staged a walkout, did you really want, want to debate no, this? The, 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 the walkout was because the speaker did not allow us to even debate it. Look, when they were talking, it was past two o'clock. It was past two o'clock, and uh, at two o'clock, the speaker is supposed to tell us that we are sitting beyond the hours of parliament. So all those things did not happen. Right. We are talking about good governance. It, it, this is a major uh, policy initiative. The bill that they brought in July did not talk about it. So Tuesday, the minister is coming to give a budget statement. Why right. don't we uh, allow him to bring that there? Then when we get into the debate, we get into it. Right. Why um, come through this uh, uh, very awkward way? It, it doesn't help anybody. Right. Uh, Mr. Fawson, uh, if you're there, uh, Deputy uh, Finance Minister Ato Fawson, if you're there, you, 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 heard, you heard Dr. Akoto say, uh, uh. suggesting that his posture, the posturing of government and the majority, including the Speaker, more like made it impossible for the minority to engage in a debate over this. No, you see, I'm, 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 I'm very amazed and I'm very surprised uh, from what uh, my honorable colleague is saying. Because, indeed, Ministry of Finance, through myself, proposed an amendment. And this amendment was put to question. 
and the principles of the amendment is to increase VAT to, to, to 15%. However, I did not hear from the minority side opposing. So if you do not oppose and the amendment is carried, who do you have to blame? So if he's to come here and to say, and if he's to come, I did not hear from you. Look, the amendment was put to vote, and nobody says no. And we took up. We are supposed to be allowed to debate it. No, if, if there was a terms of the voice vote, then the speaker could have asked us to debate no. it. And then <laughs> right, it right. Um, Mr. Fawson, I, I want to give uh, Dr. Akutose a brief uh, chance to react to what you just said. Uh, it looks like he wants to react, yes. When the minister gets up and proposes an amendment, it's for conservation of the house. This is a very major policy initiative. The most the speaker can do is allow debate before he, 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 he calls the question. If we get that and you don't allow us, uh, you don't call us, you, you, you are precluding debate. Tell me, ask the deputy minister, does he know when uh, uh, there's been a major increase that there hasn't been any debate about it? This is not uh, any ordinary increase. Even the, the tax increases on uh, condoms and, and all those things, we debated it. Let us debate it. If uh, we debate it and you win, that's fine. But to preclude debate on such a major policy initiative, because look, this uh, so, uh, tax initiative is yeah. for. Uh, it's, a, it's a consumption tax. Right. So, so Doc, really, I mean, I need to get a fair understanding that you boycotted. That's fair. You you walked out of Parliament. It's your right. But you didn't also take uh, part in the debate. If you had the opportunity to, to, to if, if you if you had the opportunity to take part in the debate, what would have no. been the the stand no. of your party? Reject this. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think. Uh, I mean, when this is hypothetical, if you don't give me a chance to to. Uh, I have my views, and I, I, I'm supposed to represent my constituents. You preclude me from doing my job as, a, as an MP. So wh wh what is the point? No, so, so I'm asking you, Doc, that's exactly what I'm asking you, that if you had the chance to take part in the debate, I'm what would your stance be? Reject it? Let, let the majority side uh, uh, provide opportunity for debate so that Ghanaians can hear it. The debate is, is not on air. Right. The debate is in Parliament. Right, Mr. Fawson. You you are yes. hearing you are hearing Dr. Akutose. Yes, now I, I, let me I, I, let me let me like ask to, a straight a straight question before, before you go ahead and yeah. ask me. I would like to make some factual correction. Mm. It cannot be correct that we took the vote after two o'clock. In fact, we took the vote before two o'clock, and it is after I took the vote that the speaker directed that we sit outside the prescribed hours. So it that was a, I need two to correct, correct, correct that. Number two. No, it wasn't past two o'clock, so we need to correct that impression. That wasn't correct, and it cannot be correct. I mean, no, the, the, no, the Hansard please, can capture that. Please, the the Hansard, the the Hansard, Hansard was, will bear me witness. This is what Look. happened. And number two, number two, even before, as soon as I stood up to make a case for amendment, the minority started shouting. So they were not ready even to listen to me and to provide an input. And that means we need to correct that impression. You had a plan, obviously, to oppose it even before I concluded my statement. And that is why you did not hear from me. Mr. Tufosin, if, if, if we are going to talk about the truth, you recall that the chairperson of the committee talked to me even much earlier. And I indicated that we, 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 we are opposed to the way they are bringing it. The majority leader met me outside. We discussed this. Well, let's let, 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 be honest with Ghanaian. Right, so, so it means so, I agree, but yeah, may, may I come in now? Sir? You cannot, you cannot blame yeah. the speaker for not allowing you to speak. Right, may I come it in? May I come in? You sir? had your idea before coming on the floor, before no. I think I came in with the amendment. <laughs> You cannot blame the speaker. Well, gentlemen, gentlemen uh, Mr. Atu Fawson and Dr. Akutose, may I come in? Uh, now, Mr. Fawson, the thing is that um, the president recently announced a 25% uh, subsidy absorption, and now there is an increase in the VAT rate. There are many who say that this is more like robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's going to really pinch a lot of Ghanaians down with this increase. Don't you see it that way? Are you talking to me? Yes, sir. I'm, yes. I'm let saying, me, yeah. Let me say, yeah. yes, um, let me say this. Obviously, if government decides to subsidize utilities to the tune of 400 million Ghana cities, the money should come from somewhere. 
it may be able to come from revenue or government will decide to come uh, decide to cut down expenditure on other capital expenditure or something else for the purposes of financing this gap or maybe decide to go out there and borrow to support that which is not an option i will not say that we came we we, we decided to increase vat for the purposes of using the outcome to support the subsidy that government has decided to go about the import of this VAT increase is clear. Government has decided to use the total revenue that we expect to accrue, which is 745 million, for the purposes of supporting the capital expenditure aspect of the 2014 budget. And going into 2015, we are going to use this one for the purposes of supporting Ghana infrastructure development fund. Which the budget is going to address that, and I'm not ready to preempt the but, budget. But 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 sir, you do. But sir, you do appreciate that these are there are these are really tough times. So this uh, increase in VAT rate is really going to pinch people down with salary levels all remaining static. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm Holmes, -hmm. let, let me ask the minister. To to to, to some oh, extent, oh, on, on, to, on to some extent, major policy initiatives. We don't even have uh, 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 in the original bill that brought the VAT. There's no. Uh, Indication that this was going to come. So, if the government has changed its mind, don't you think that the government will wait for Tuesday when the minister comes to say that, look, in the budget we are proposing this? Because the memorandum that we, we looked at, there's no indication that all these issues are there. Yes, if the government wants to do it Tuesday, the minister can come and propose it and let's debate it. But we are saying that when we have agreed, uh, and, and decided that we keep it at 12, that's close to rain. Right. For, for it to come at the time that it came, it is just not good governance. Right. Uh, Dr. Atatose, uh, quickly, yes. um, Mr. Atatose, we'll give you 30 seconds to wrap up. We're okay. actually out can of I, time, sir. Can I say this, that yes. it cannot be correct that the Act did not say that we are coming out with something else. In fact, let me read a long title of the Act. It says that an Act to revise and consolidate the law relating to the imposition of the value-added tax and to provide for related matters. And it means so, a, a, a main case can a be part of related matters. Increase. I think Dr. Kotel said, I, I, I believe you spoke, so allow me also to conclude. You've given but, me 40 uh, seconds. Atu, 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 Atu. Uh, you have spoken. Mean, well, Please, I beg your pardon, you gentlemen. Uh, we might have to wrap up. Uh, our time is up. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Thank Deputy you. Finance Minister to Forcing and Dr. Anthony Akoto. Say this has been today's big story. We'll be right back with Joyny's exclusive with uh, Joyny's interactive. I beg your pardon with Marianne Terry. Stay with us. So welcome back uh, from uh, this tomorrow, certainly going uh, on Monday, you will start paying 2.5% more in VAT on everything that you, you buy. So if you're just joining us, welcome to JN Interactive. And uh, you can join us on facebook.com slash join us on TV. We have comments there. Please put... Um, we have posted something there, comment on it, and we will share them with the rest of the world. If you are on Twitter, we tweet at Join News on TV. And remember to use the hashtag GN Interactive GH, so we'll be able to sort all your tweets out and take them all at once. If you're sending us an email, it is joinnewsim at multitvworld.com. And then the, the WhatsApp number to use will be 0260 eight zero one and that is the whatsapp number that you need to get in touch with us on the show so that we can share every picture every comment that you send to us with the rest of the world after all the show is all about you it's about what you are talking about and we will also talk about it on this platform for you And as you already know, JN Interactive is where tech meets news to set the agenda. So you're talking about it on social media. 
we're also talking about it here on this platform for you. And then today it's just happened and that uh, the minority in parliament has boycotted proceedings over the VAT amendment debate and uh, the minority caucus was furious over a 2.5% increment in the value added tax to 2013 bill which had never been discussed before today. And so their fury is not just even about just the increment but just because they feel that government just wanted to slip something past them and so you know you decide we're going to talk about something and then all of a sudden you change it and then talk about something else so they decided to boycott it and, and I'd like for you to listen to their reason they were very very angry when they held the press conference so take a listen to what they had to say in this one <laughs> Minority will work up because we are rejecting it. We, the, we are asking the people to increase, but they should have called for a debate, informed debate. The minority will debate, the media will debate, civil society will debate, everybody will debate. Because you cannot increase electricity prices, you cannot increase all these taxes, and then at the quantum, at the end of the day, you increase back without any debate. Within 15 minutes of an afternoon, government says that increase back from 15%, it's not 70 and a half, it's a quick country with this so at least you heard it from the horse's own mouth. This is the reason why they had to boycott parliament today and leave a one-sided parliament to decide on what they wanted to decide on without them. Uh, after all, if they are not important for you to talk to them about the things prior to that and you gazump it on them, then they'll leave it to you because if that is what you want, then you have what you want. But soon after that, they held a press conference. So let's take a listen to Oseche Mensabunsu, who is a minority leader in parliament. <laughs> Civilized democracy. If you want to attend to such a major policy issue, you will try to build consensus. The majority will involve the minority and will discuss it. What was there to hide when I called the minister responsible for finance who told me that there is no such thing in the cast? What was there to hide when I engaged the ma my majority leader and he told me that as far as I were, it's a non issue? Can we believe them? Can we trust them? This country is not for NDC. It's not for them. So you can't just go and hide in your corner and spring a surprise on the nation. It's not done in any civilized democracy. It's not done in any civilized democracy. Because see, you my, my point is, already the people are being burdened with numerous <laughs> taxes. Now, if you were minded to bring this, you do your computations. And perhaps say that, okay, we are going to increase the threshold by this extent. And that will then not need to increase these taxes in these areas. You do all those calculations, right? Which one cancels the other out and so on. But at the end of it, you want to increase your revenue by whatever quantum. The house should know. But then you do things in such a haphazard manner that if you ask them today what your own uh, your own anticipations in respect of this, nobody will be able to tell. And it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Welcome back, and as always, our cameras always roam around town and they catch up with you. We have been catching up with you, and we're asking you that VAT is up 2.5%. What do you think about that? You've been sharing that with us, so let's take our next video blog. With this little, like I, I look for the increase. In fact, even with this little, like I, I alluded to earlier, we don't see what they are using it for. So the government should really sit down, strategize, or set up measures so that we, we the people, will appreciate the little tax we are paying. We will appreciate what is being used for. Before, when they ask for increase, we will be able to do that gladly. Actually, I don't think I don't think that's necessary because what we've been paying earlier, I don't see anything coming out of this. Why should they increase it? All the time increments, all the time increments, and nothing better is responding to that. So I don't know where we are, the direction which we are taking now. Well, I, I can't actually tell what is happening to the state now. We are going in the direction which people must sit down and bring back Ghana to its normal position. 
But with the rights at which we are taking now, I don't think it's going to help any of us. No, actually increasing it to 2.5, I don't see the reason for increasing it. You see, every time they are increasing taxes, increasing taxes, but we are not getting the direct benefit. So if they say they have increased tax to 2.5, I don't see the reason. Uh, the, the, the government have to do something better with this tax. Otherwise, uh, the development that is going on in this country, I'm not seeing any improvement at all. So they, they should better reduce it so that we continue paying any meaningful tax that we think we can pay. It is becoming serious the way everything is just going up in this country. Uh, lots of levies have gone up. A lot of new taxes have come up. And now we have been slapped uh, with an increase in VAT. I just don't know how the government wants Ghanaians, I mean, to, 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 to survive. Because things are becoming more difficult. I think that government is, approach, uh, is approaching this issue of raising revenue uh, not with the best options they have. Uh, it's a lazy, a lazy approach to actually increasing revenue. Uh, the economy is growing, but we know that most of the growth is in the oil sector. When you hear Ghana's economy expanding, it is only the oil that has made Ghana's economy expanded. But as, as to actual economic activity in the country, I see that, that you don't see it. So taking more money from the people is actually making the people suffer the more. And indeed, we are suffering. Let's go to Facebook and take some comments that you have been sending through to us. Uh, we are asking, do developments in the country correspond with all these increases in taxes? And FO says, I find this increase unfortunate, but schools, roads, hospitals, and other structures need to be put up. So let's hope and make sure they put these monies into good use. But hey... It is the same minority leader who asked for their salaries to be increased. You see how time has exposed him big time. You walk out from your work in parliament, yet you expect your salaries to be increased. Never, not in Ghana. And um, when this thing came up today, that was the same thing that just came out into my mind. I was thinking, hmm, the same gentleman a few days ago was asking, you know, for... A salary increase and now VAT is going to be increased so that he can get his salary increase and he's saying no but he's not saying no to the increase he's just saying that perhaps you should have told us earlier about the increase so that we'll know where to cut corners to make the increase possible so let's take some more comments Newton says reducing utility tariffs and increasing VAT is simply robbing Peter to pay Paul Kennedy Asari Queen, I am not sure that increment on taxes will help develop any nation, but when proper structures are put in place, like dealing with uh, employment issues in the country, Roland Yabua, fine boy, politicians, wicked people, Kesek Clement, oh no, economic hardship continues. Askanda Kobila says uh, Dr. Baumia has been vindicated in less than 48 hours. He said NDC was going to increase and impose taxes. Now NDC wants to increase the VAT. Newton says the timing is very wrong. The ordinary Ghanaian is suffering. But, you know, uh, but in all, they should follow appropriate steps to enact laws, but not a surprise. Why King Solomon II? The government is extremely confused. This is robbing Peter to pay Paul. And um, that is what you have been talking to us about. So we, we, we're asking that, uh, you know, my, minority, they, they actually boycotted parliament. They have boycotted because of all of these things. So what do you think about their boycott? Let's take our next video blog. Walking out of parliament, he himself knows very well that, yeah, the, um, the citizens cannot bear that cost in the sense that he's, uh, he's seen that we are paying taxes, we are paying taxes, but we are not benefiting. Um, walking out of parliament is, is not the solution. You know, if they are able to stay on, to argue out on issues, I'm sure that will rather help. If you walk out, already they are the majority. They implement the things, they, but if you are there and you are able to bring out your voice, you say why it should not be increased. We, the public, who are to listen to most of these things on TV, who appreciate the sense in what they say, but if you keep quiet and you walk out, what, what, what have you done? If you are able to stay on to argue your case out, I think that is the best, but 
when you work out, I don't think communication is always the best. You communicate, we see what you are bringing to the table, then we, we resolve issues. I think that is rather the best. I agree, I agree with them. I agree with them 99% because I, I don't understand. It's like the government now, it, it, I don't just understand them. I don't understand what's happening. So I agree with them. I agree with them. Yeah, I'm agree with them because they should have passed this law because uh, it's something that they should do as a, a reasonable issue because what they are doing it doesn't favor the, the citizen in this country. Yeah, so uh, I actually support living, uh, what do you call it? Living the uh, parliament, yeah. I don't know the reasons why they walked out, but I think that, uh, as I said in the first place, any ordinary Ghanaian that you approach with this issue will not take it kindly because it is adding on to our difficulties. Maybe they didn't get opp the opportunity on the floor of parliament to express, I mean, their views. Or maybe at the committee level or in the build up to this final announcement of 2.5 increase, their views were not taken on board. So they have found another uh, opportunity to express, I mean, uh, their concerns, which is already a legitimate tool we know that is used in our kind of democracy that we are practicing. But I think that government should take a second look at it and bring, bring it down. But uh, it is going to increase the suffering of Ghanaians. Ghanaians are suffering already. I'm sure you talking to me, you are feeling the heat as well. The cameraman too is also feeling the heat. Uh, meanwhile, the you know the majority in parliament have voted to increase uh, the VAT by 2.5%. So as we speak right now, VAT stands at 17.5%, not 15% uh, anymore. So 2.5% increment, we are now at 17.5%. Let's go and take some more of your comments that are coming to Gizman Emanuelson says, uh, when they finish behaving in parliament, then they are calling for increment in salary. Baba Musa Tamale, the minority MPs must spare Ghanaians their hypocrisies and double standards behavior. These same minority MPs boycotted the vetting of all the ministerial nominees. They also boycotted a state of nations address by the president and the inauguration of President Mahama. The question we ask them is, where they sent where they sent where they whoa where they sent there uh by their constituents uh, to behave in that manner oh you're asking a question didn't they didn't they short change their constituents by their non-participation in um the above mentioned activities the minority MPs should come again uh rex lee says it's never good for them to work out well they have done it. You see, if Nabila Al Hassan says, when government expenditure rises, the natural consequence is that government either borrows from the capital markets by way of issuing bonds or increasing taxes to fund, say. So, when government throws utility um, subsidies at you worth 400 million Ghana CDs rather than just jubilate, ask yourself how government will fund that. There is no free lunch anywhere, Simon says. To some extent, yes, Karim Fuseni is good because if we're able to retrieve those corrupted um, monies, we will not need this kind of increases. And then we will go and take our final video blog. We are asking you whether you think developments correspond with all these increases. Now, the increases, they have happened. The fuel has gone up. Everything else is going up. Are we seeing corresponding developments in this country? Let's take our last video blog. Um, I don't really see um, correspondence in relation to the tax we pay. Um, a clear example is um, our income tax we pay every month, at the end of every month. Even those who, do not, who are not salaried workers, they are taxed based on the items they buy. Look at our roads. These are what the taxes are supposed to be meant for. Water is a challenge, electricity is a challenge, every other thing is a challenge. All we rather see is increase here and there. Um, like I just heard that tax has been increased again, which is awful to me because even with the little we are being taxed for, we don't see the relevance of what they are really doing with it. Like 
the road to. It's, it's a form of tax. Yet, it's now and then we have issues on our road, accidents here and there because of portals and other things. So I think if the government can do something about the taxes, it will it will help the nation a lot, and we we'll appreciate that. For me, I've not seen any, anything better. Actually, I've not seen anything good because um, looking at the schools, um, our roads, our, even the hospitals now, we don't even see anything better. Um, the schools, for instance, now I've heard that they are they are making the schools to pay their own electricity bills, which are not good. Because if we are we are we are blessed with all these things in this country, like the gold and, and everything we have in this country, which even the white people are even interested in it, I don't see any reason why the students should even be paying that kind of money. And it's, it's not good. It's it's really hurting because the parents are going through a lot these days. You know, look at our rules. Even when I was coming from um, Madina right now, I saw some. People, well, I mean, some mad people on the road, just floating the place, making the place very, very dirty. And then we, we, we pay our taxes through all this, even pure that we buy, pay taxes. Because as, as we buy the water and then um, the money gets to the, the company, they also pay tax over there. So I don't see any reason why they should not, uh, they should not tell or enforce these organizations or these companies to get all the floats on the road. I, I, I don't even see anything good in what we are paying. We pay more than the development I'm seeing. Well, as at the rate at what we are paying now, I expect much development. But I don't think anything better like that is happening. Well, at the rate at which we are paying taxes about 60 something points, I think we should have been able to develop higher than the level at which we are now. So I don't think paying those taxes is much important. The government should have used it more than what they are doing now. But rather going to private towns, and I don't think it will help the nation. Uh, actually, you see, the taxes we are paying, we are not benefiting much from the taxes. You can see that some of the money people pay in buying the in, uh, in buying water, such as water, and paying some of your school fees, but you are not seeing the direct development, the direct benefit. In the sense that you see the roads in town, potholes, and if you go beyond the villages, you see some of the schools over there, they are not benefiting as they could, as compared to uh, some public schools in the cities and the towns around. You can see some villages beyond the cities, they are not and getting direct tuition as some schools are getting from the taxes we are not benefiting actually it's like the uh, the monies are passing through certain corners which we don't know actually yeah well, actually i don't see much development because the taxes that we are paying i realize that is far better than the development that is going on in this country yeah so I don't actually see much benefit of our taxes because some of the rural has been, they claim that they are constructing, but within some few years, you will see such road. I mean, some, the, I, don't, I don't know, the, the, the road, you don't, you don't even see the actual benefit of the road itself. You see the road constructed today, but within a short period or short year, such road has got damage and all sorts of things. So um, the task that... And the task that you are taking is far better than the development than in this country. If you do the correlation, the government is taking more from us than actually delivering to us, especially in, in the area of developmental projects. Let's even look at our utilities and all that. Recently, government increased utility prices. But I think that the power sector, the problems are still there. We still have lights off. We still have water not running uh, through our pipes, uh, our taps and all that. So I, I think that government is just taking more money from the people and not actually doing uh, a lot to ameliorate our difficulties or meet our challenges. Uh, what I see is that, as I already said earlier, that government is adopting a lazy way of actually growing this economy, just taking money from the people. And to be frank with you, the money is not there. Go and talk to business people and you will really know what is happening in this country. But a lot of businesses are not able to deliver as they should or they are not operating at their optimum because of the difficulties. Because they have to spend more on energy, they have to spend more on water, they have to spend more on everything. Now that VAT has also come up, it means that a lot of things will prices uh, prices of things will also change because you know that if there is tax on any item 
what happens finally that it is passed finally to the consumer. It is those who consume that will finally pay. So, Carl, uh, Issa says uh, from Gurangu, I'm disappointed in the minority today at Parliament. They will continue to be in opposition forever. Um, Sairam says, instead of them to work and get paid, they are rather demanding for increments in pay. God save Ghana. And I take my final comment, and that one is coming from Roland Yabua. Did I hear it right? And peace behaving like nursery children singing away. It's a shame. Why wouldn't they, un, uh, they uneducated Ghanaians kill just to explain his displeasure? Small boys are young. <laughs> wow. So thank you so much for all the comments uh, that you have sent through to us. The show thrives on you and the comments that you sent. Thank you so much. Steve joins me so that we can wrap up together. Welcome back. All right, Tori. Mm. Uh, thanks. Uh, very soon, uh, uh, John is exclusive for, for the ride. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, will, we will continue with our documentary series on the microfinance industries, uh, the risks and and benefits. Now, stories to expect at, uh, with Israel Eye, President John Muhammad directs ministries of finance and the Attorney General's Department and Economic and Organized Crime Office to recover monies wrongfully paid out by the state to some institutions and individuals. And also to come in News at 8 with Israel Elias, the farmers, uh, Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana has positioned government to uh, invest oil revenues in the development of smallholder farmers. My name is Stephen Ante. And as always, my name is Marian Toure. Have a fabulous weekend. We Thanks shall for see you again Monday.